Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's been a while since I posted a video on my channel. I had a very well needed break. In today's video, I'm going to be doing an electrical job. I want to take the receptacle, which is a GFCI receptacle located next to the switch by the doorway. And I want to move it over here to the left side of this towel holder. I don't like having this cord all the way over here, draped along the counter. It would be so much nicer just to have the plug where it's supposed to be, right over there. I also don't like the fact that this electrical cover is jammed right up against this molding around the doorway. So in this video, you're going to see the whole process of moving this receptacle over to here, and then taking the switch that remains, putting it more towards the center all by itself, getting it away from this molding. Now I'm going to be turning off the electric to this three-way switch in just a minute, but first let me take these screws off, take a look inside, just to show you what we're going to be working with. You can see it's right into the wood, the cover, so I'm going to have to fill in that wood, repair the plaster when I do the switch more to the left. Now over here, the cover is not gonna come off so easily because I did seal around the perimeter using caulking. So I'm going to take a utility knife, cut that clean, and then pop the cover off. You can see there's a metal plaster ring. It's a double, sticks out 5 eighths of an inch from the wall. And right here is the plaster ring I'll be using. It's a single, sticking out only a half of an inch. So this is gonna be placed on that box, and the switch will be right in the middle. Okay, the power has been disconnected to this electrical box. You're going to take a tester just to verify that it is off. And you can usually hold it next to the switch. Nothing going on. Always test this or any other tester on a known live circuit before using it to check what you're working on. So let me take the three-way switch out. This turns the light on and off from two locations. So let's do this. Okay, so let's grab this. The top screws are the line or the branch circuit this is connected to, and the bottom with the tape over it is the load side. So if you wanted to protect other receptacles in your bathroom or elsewhere, the circuit would connect to this point here, and then every receptacle after this one would also be protected. So let's remove this. We need to get everything out of here to do what I need to do. Silver screw is always your neutral, and the black or brass screw is always the hot. Now if you look at this switch, you can see there is a black screw, it's a three-way. That is the common, that happens to be the black wire. And down here you have a brass screw with a blue wire, and on this side is another brass screw with a blue wire. What these two blue wires are, are the travelers. So the blue wires have to go back in the exact same spot. This switch should be grounded, even though it's all plastic and you cannot get a shock, you do want to see a ground wire attached to the screw. So when this is all put back together, I will be sure to add a ground wire to that screw. These wires are a little short, not surprising on older wiring. All right, so both of these hot wires are connected to this red. Let's disconnect both of these for now. Give me a lot more room to work. And looking at the size or gauge of these wires, it is a 15 amp circuit. Now I gotta get this ring out of here. They have one screw holding it at the bottom. Okay, so this looks pretty good here. Connections look fine. This system uses electrical metallic tubing, or EMT, that goes between this point here and the electrical panel, 
and this is what the ground is. So you can see the wire here goes to the back of the box and lousy job as expected. Look at this, they just push it through, it's not even secure. I'm going to have to remove that, drill a hole and tap it for a ground screw. Now before this new plaster ring goes in, using the screw holes here and here, I want to have plenty of area to work to get the Romex cable to go between this box and the new location to the left. I know there's a stud running down the wall right here because the magnet identified the location of a drywall screw. So I'm going to have to drill through that stud to get to the opposite side where the new electrical box will be mounted. So let's pop this one out right here. See, I loosened this knockout. I was also able to pull this box forward and secure it better. That's good. I'll be using this plastic bushing that's going to go in here to protect the Romex cable going to the left. So this one here, you can tell by looking at it, is a 14 gauge. So I'm going to be using 14 gauge Romex. And right here it is, black, white with the ground. After the hole is drilled into that stud, the cable will be inserted through the stud over to the other electrical box. The next step is to make another opening to the left of this towel holder where this electrical box will be installed. This is a remodeling one. It grabs onto the sheetrock once you make the hole and insert it into the wall. You wanna make sure when you drill the hole in the two x four, make it around five eighths of an inch in diameter to three quarters, and you wanna drill in the center. Don't drill close to the sheetrock because if you ever put a screw in, you may hit the cable. To make the cutout, I'll be using a drywall jab saw. And I lucked out, I ended up just above, like a fire stop, and way in the back is a metal pipe. So I cleared all that, luckily, perfect. That's exactly what I want, and that's perfect location. And I could plug in my electric toothbrush right here without having a wire going off to the side. So the next thing is to make a hole in the 2x4 right here between that electrical box to the right and the new location. If you can't get inside, the only other alternative would be to make a notch in the drywall, cut out the wood, Make sure you go at least about three quarters of an inch deep. You could lay it across the notch, the wire, or the Romex cable, and then you'd have to put a metal nailing plate over that notch to protect the cable before the drywall goes back. But I'm gonna try drilling right into that wood, which is right here. Nice two by four right here. All right, the way I'm going to try drilling this is using this spade bit on this extension. I'm gonna reach inside. Let's try going down. All right, you can see right there. And then I'm going to take this 90 degree, put it on the end and use my drill. here almost all the way through it does work this little tool here saved me a lot of trouble having to cut open the sheetrock let me grab it with this and you notice I used a different tip the flat if I use self-tapping I would have never been able to use that right angle drill adapter let me see if I can get in here and grab this perfect Perfect. Leave about that much. Let's cut this off over here. And that's how you do that without making a hole there. Cable's pushed in. Now what I'm going to do, because the bottom is a fire stop going right across here, and the sheetrock is just maybe 
3 30 seconds of an inch higher I'm going to remove this lower wing is going to be a screw going straight down from that corner into the wood so let me take this one out here solid one screw in the corner there into the wood I'm going to strip the insulation off the Romex using a utility knife go all the way to the top leave about one inch after where it connects to the clamps the jacket is removed and I could still pull some of this cable through if I wanted now I'm going to strip off about a half of an inch of the insulation on the black and the white there's the white and now the ground at the bottom and then I can push this in, screw it back in, and put the cover on, and this is all done on that side. You push that in carefully by just bending a loop in those wires. Okay, with that in, now let's put the cover. Here you can see how nice it looks off to the left side of the towel. Got my night light, which is great. Don't have to turn the light on at night. Lights the sink up. Toothbrush goes right in here. Now let's finish off over here. Let's get rid of this disgrace. Pull it out. You can just spread it apart a little bit, put it on the wire, and then push it right in there until it locks. That's plenty of wire. I can actually leave it just like that. So you want to give this... That looks good. Like before, leave about three quarters of an inch to an inch. Right there. That looks good. That's fine. Paper off the ground wire. Get rid of that. That is excellent, guys. Let me strip these wires. Just enough to go into the insulation. You don't want to nick the copper. So just very carefully, you just go like this and just pop it. We're going to put this ring back on, get all the connections made in here, put the switch back, and then I'm going to take the piece that I removed from the drywall and use that to repair. Let me take the 1032 screws, get this lined up, put one there, one in the corner. The box is solid now. Screw there and screw there. Let me drill a hole in the back of this box for a ground screw. You can see right over here I drilled a hole. Now I'm going to take this tap. It's a 1032. Insert it into that opening and thread it. Let's see if it goes in easily. Beautiful. Let's just squeeze that together. And then I'll add more onto here with a wire nut heading over to the switch. And that is not going anywhere. That's the way it should have been done from the beginning. Let me get another piece of 14 gauge copper. This small neutral wire can go bye bye. All right, this used to go to the electrical receptacle. Because these wires are kind of short, normally I would just use a wire nut, but I don't want to risk having this snap and having to deal with such short wires. So I'm going to be using a Wago. You simply slide the wire in, and then you pull the lever down and lock it. There's a little strip gauge on the side. So I can see right here, mine is a little too long. Trim off the tip just a little bit. That looks good. And I can tell by looking at the other one. Bring that one down to there. And then this one to there. They're all in. Lock, lock, lock. Okay. You can see that's not going to be in the way of the switch. Two blue wires to the travelers on the three-way switch. This power connection is going to need another copper wire here. That's going to go to the switch, the common, and it's also going to tie in here, feeding power to the GFCI, and then the wire for the ground screw on the switch. Now I'm going to connect up the travelers, the common, and the ground on the three-way switch. 
until I tighten it. There you go. All right. Let me carefully push all this back into the box, screw it in, turn on the power, make sure the light works, and make sure the receptacle works independent of each other. Okay, power's on. It's a three-way switch. Let's try the other one. You can see that's working great. Let me patch this up, come back, show you what it looks like, all finished and painted. Here it is complete. So much better having that receptacle off to the left. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. Thanks for watching.